if you think about it as agencies, right, we're trying to sell retainer-based services or SaaSpreneurs. We're trying to get people to sign up for our monthly service fee for our SaaS. Um, we have to have a, a sales process. We have to have a way to take people from not knowing us at all to knowing us, liking us, trusting us, entering our funnel and kind of becoming clients. And so at this point, I've had the opportunity to, um, you know, to probably sell, I was trying to do the math. It's, we're at 420,000 in monthly recurring in our agency right now. But over the years, I've sold over $10 million in retainer-based agency services. Um, and I've worked with hundreds of agencies and helped them put this type of funnel in place. And it's hundreds of millions of dollars that have come through this exact process. So if you're excited about kind of looking at this with a new set of eyes, your, your sales funnel for your SaaS or for your agency, again, I just want you guys to type funnel into the comments. We're going to get into it. I'm going to start high level with this. I'm going to map it out on the, on the whiteboard here. And then we're going to get eye level. We're going to get very specific. We're going to get down into the, into the nitty gritty. So the ultimate agency funnel, and I'm glad you, you said this as we kick things off, uh, Paulson, starts with a niche, right? A clear niche, a clear idea of who you're talking to. And the reason I say that is because if you're going to create a lead magnet or you're going to take people through a sales process, they're only interested in that if it feels really relevant to them. If it's like, okay, that cheat sheet, that guide, that checklist, that case study is specific to me. It's specific to my industry. Um, and we all know the fastest way to grow your agency, to grow your SaaS, is to serve a very specific target audience. So in, in my mind, at the very top of the funnel is the clear niche. So I'm going to ask again, if you could, in the comments over in the Facebook group, just type in for me what your niche is. I saw automotive earlier. My agency, we work with plumbing and HVAC contractors. Um, I know some people are shy about sharing their niche because they don't want someone to find the secret sauce. Um, and if that's you, that that's okay. Like there, there's yeah. room for, for everybody. I don't want anybody to find out that I had a dental agency and an automotive agency. Nobody's heard of that industry. Both no. are extru extremely exclusive, just in case of in case nobody knew. <laughs> All right. So Greg is in Greg is in HVAC. Um, near Leah is in family physicians. Brian works with med spots. Awesome. Okay. So that's where we start, right? And the next step is is the opt in. And what I want to do is kind of, as I talk through this, I want to give you some of the specifics because this three-step funnel is pretty simple, right? This is not rocket science, but the, the interconnection of the steps, what you do on the confirmation page, what you do with the email sequences and the communication in between is really where the magic is and what makes this work. And so often when we think about opt-ins, and I'm going to talk about lead magnets and cool lead magnets that work best. But often what we see is we're going to have a page and that page is going to have like a cool visual for the lead magnet and there's an opt-in, right? All this is masterfully done inside of the funnel builder inside of high level. But usually what happens is we take them to a follow-up page once they've opted in and that page basically says, hey, we, you know, thanks for requesting the thing. We've sent it to you via email, right? And in my mind, that's a miss, right? The, the most captive your prospects are ever going to be is in the moment right after they request your lead magnet. And so you want to be really conscious of what you do on that confirmation page. And what we do is we offer them a shortcut right at that moment. And so what I'm going to suggest, and I'll show you guys visuals of exactly how we do this. So you'll be able to see it, but I want you to get the big picture strategy before we want an autoplay video here that says, hey, thanks so much for requesting that lead magnet, right? I went ahead and sent it to your email. Go ahead and check it out. You're going to get it. And say right then and there, look, in my case, plumbing HVAC companies, if you're like most plumbing HVAC companies, you wanted that thing. You wanted that book. You wanted that guide. You wanted whatever it is. But really what you want is somebody that can implement this for you. Somebody that can help you get this rolled out into the real world. And if that's you, I want to offer you the opportunity to schedule a one-to-one. -one. And if, if you're SaaS, a one-to-one -one demo where I can walk you through exactly how we would structure this in your particular situation. If it's agency services, exactly how we can you know, help you get better results online. And what we find is this page right here, the confirmation page right after they request the lead magnet is where most of our appointments come from, right? It's not necessarily in the follow-up, even though we want follow-up. 
it's in that one, two step right there. So if you could put two step in the comments and just kind of acknowledge after they opt in, we don't want to sleep on the confirmation page. The confirmation page is where we're going to get people to jump straight into our strategy sessions, straight into our calendar, straight into our demo meetings. Brian gave me a two-step in the comments. Thanks for engaging, guys. Helps me know that like I'm, I'm talking and people are hearing and this is resonating. Now, in addition to that, we want to have follow-up sequencing, right? And so obviously, we're going to do some emails, right? And the emails are like, first of all, here's your lead magnet. Second of all, hey, did you get a chance to look at that lead magnet, right? We're going to have a couple of emails that basically touch on the basic foundations of what they just did. But I think you want to also, in a lot of cases, do SMS, where we're text messaging them right after they've opted in. Hey, I saw you requested a thing. With the idea of starting a conversation, we want to drop them onto a pipeline, right? So we can qualify them. They opted in. That doesn't mean they're a good fit for our services. It means that they've had some interest in it, right? And so I'm going to show you guys specifics on all of this, but you really want to make sure after the opt in, You've got a follow-up sequence of emails, a couple of SMS. Don't go crazy with the SMS. A couple of text messages that are very conversational ba ba based work really well. Um, and I think the one thing I see that gets missed often is people are just getting the opt-ins, but they're not dropping them onto a pipeline and strategically moving them outside of the automation to the next step in the process. So pretty simple, right? We're going to have a lead magnet the prospects are interested in. We're going to offer it. We're going to offer them a shortcut where they can schedule in a strategy session, move them to the bottom of our funnel, which is down here. Um, and then we're going to have a sequence of emails and a sequence of communication, ideally, that's going to nudge them forward. The second step in our funnel is the, is the appointment, right? And whether this is for a demo or whether this is for a strategy session, all of us are going to have to do this. I know at the, at the SaaSpreneur event last week, Paulson and I and um, Chase and Sean were having this debate, like for your SaaS, do they need to have a demo, right? Plus, I'd love to, like, because I know that you had some pretty strong feelings on this. I don't have strong feelings on it about in agency services, you're going to have to have a consultative sales process. Like they're not going to watch a video and just buy. Um, and I think at least early, Paulson, um, you're going to need to demo your software. Yeah, I, I think it, it, first of all, it depends on where you are, right? So if you're starting out and don't have an audience, don't have a ton of clients like Josh does, where you're just migrating people over into a SaaS offer, you must do a demo because you don't know enough about that industry just yet. You're still in beta. If you're, if you're under like 200 subscriptions, I don't care if you're making money, you're still in beta. Why? Because you don't have enough data about the industry. We don't know how that industry is going to use the platform. So when it comes to SaaS early on, I recommend a demo. Okay. When it's a SaaS hybrid model, you don't really have a choice but to do a demo because you have to articulate what are going to be the expanded services that makes the hybrid component of your SaaS offer, right? So if you do SaaS hybrid, you, you don't really have a choice but to talk about Facebook ads and websites or GMB services and how it's going to all really move the needle. But if you're just doing SaaS alone early on, yes, you need to do the demo. Now, guess what? You're not going to build your entire businesses on demo. Eventually, just like any other SaaS company, just like ours as well, you're going to go into a demo-less process. Once your offers are confirmed, once you figure out how your users are moving through, once you have ironed out your onboarding process and also figured out the right tiers of offers, okay? But that doesn't happen just because you got 50 subscribers. That's exciting, but you just don't have enough data. So I do feel pretty strongly about doing a demo first, ironing out your processes before you kind of take the training wheels off and go ride the bike on your own or let the process kind of ride on its own. Okay. So yes, I do have some strong feelings about it, Josh. You, you already know this. So, so for most of us, I would say 90% of us watching this, maybe more, we're going to put out content in whatever mechanism to try and get people to opt in. But the next step or the final step in our process is typically going to be this appointment, whether that's for a consultative sales process or a demo. And what I see people miss with this appointment funnel, right? Because the technology is great in high level where we've got this calendar where they can book at a time and we can set up an easy workflow where they get reminders. 
is we fail to really sell the value of the demo. We fail to sell the value of the appointment. And so what I believe is in our appointment funnel, we want to have a video on the page where they can schedule in that sells them on what's going to happen. Hey, listen, when we meet, we're going to do X, Y, Z. You're going to get X, Y, Z value. And this is what you're going to walk away with. I'll, I'll fill in some of the gaps. But you want to have a video. And then I'll talk about like whether you want to pre-screen them in advance through a survey or whether you want to send them straight to the, to the booking link. But we want to sell it. But I think more than that, the confirmation page after they've just booked their session and the warm-up sequence before the appointment again, will make or break you. This is the client attraction workshop. And so my whole objective with, with this is to show you the ways to get clients to come to you pre-positioned to buy. So that when they do show up on your calendar for that meeting or for that demo, they're not a hard sell with their arms up like, hey, you know, teach, show me why I should give you five minutes. But they're already leaning in. They're like, you obviously know what you're doing. You're obviously an expert in this space. And it's a business conversation that you can have. And so what we want to do in my mind is really spend some time on the confirmation page after they schedule. So they picked Tuesday at three o'clock and they've entered their name, their email address, and their cell phone number. The thank you page, the confirmation page, usually, I'd say 99% of the time is add it to your calendar. We'll see you on Tuesday, right? Give me a one if that's your current situation or give me a two maybe if you've got something deeper than that. I think most of the time it's just straight to the next page. So what you want to do on that confirmation page is sell them, right? Sell them about why they're going to show up and give them some additional homework. What I suggest is an autoplay. Hey, thanks for scheduling. Really excited. A couple of next things I want you to do. If you could block this into your calendar, we're going to spend some time on our end, kind of like looking you up, seeing what you've got in place. We're going to do some due diligence. So please make sure that you've got this blocked into the calendar. The other thing I'd like you to do is to help you get prepared. I'm looking to do a quick assessment. And so this could either be a video-based assessment or it could be a, a funnel. Um, I think on the SaaS, right? It's just having them think about their current strategies. Do they have you know, a chat widget on their site? If somebody calls and doesn't answer, are they sending a text, you know, a, a missed call text back? Um, kind of seeding the problems that they have and getting them to think about that in advance like I'm going to give some tactical examples of this, but we want to see the reason they're going to show up. And then we want to, we want to try and indoctrinate them a little bit. Um, and so indoctrination is if you've got some video testimonials, if you've got some case studies, I encourage you to have that kind of in the below the fold, right? So you're giving them confirmation. You're selling them again on what's going to happen during the meeting. And then you're saying, hey, and just so that you can get some context in terms of what's possible for you in working in this business, um, I want you to watch a couple of the testimonials or a couple of the case studies below. I want a Y or an N, a Y or an N in the comments. Yes, if you think a Y, if you think that if you did this, more prospects would show up and they'd be more likely to come in pre-positioned and an N if you don't think it would have any impact. Just a Y or an N here in the comments in the, in the Facebook group. You got some wise, got some wise coming in. All right, so spend some time like on both of these, right? So spend some time on the confirmation page, leverage video, get them to know, like, trust you kind of before they have to come into the meeting. And then obviously we want to sequence this out, right? We want emails. Hey, you're confirmed for Tuesday at three. We want an SMS of some sort. Reminding them right before the appointment. Hey, here's what's going to happen. Hey, don't worry, you know, log in on this link. But we also want to indoctrinate. And I think that's where we, we miss out. You want to not assume that they watch the video on the confirmation page. You want to see that in the emails. Hey, we're confirmed. In order for you to get the most out of the appointment, watch this quick video. Like give them a, not a long video, like a, a quick five to seven minute primer before they come in. Hey, did you have a chance to watch a couple of these case studies before the appointment? Pulsar, I saw you came on. Did you want to add something real quick? Well, I, I just had um, one more thing to add to it. Nothing too significant. But the, the when you think about SaaS, this is where you don't go too deep and talk about features. Mm -hmm. okay? mm. Don't get into the trap of 100%. feature yapping, right? What you want to do is tell them, hey, 
I would love to get an opportunity to talk with you. And what we're going to do is help you consolidate all your traffic channels into one place so you can handle better results on sales, better way to track your sales cycles and pipelines and whatever SaaS that you're doing, right? So make sure in here, you're not talking about the offers and the delivery process, but rather setting the expectation and the agenda for the call that you're actually setting the appointment for, right? So it's yep. more of a expectations and agenda setting versus you talking about all three or four of your offers and plans. It's, it's not a standard VSL. What you're doing is setting the stage for the actual appointment. So just wanted to clarify that. That's, that's really what I observe quite often. Yeah, I'm glad you clarified that. Yeah, so guys, we're not trying to pre-sell the service at that point. You're trying to pre-sell the meeting, get them excited about what's going to happen on that meeting and what they're going to get to discover and, and sell them to show up. How many of you guys have show up issues like with, with your appointment funnel where people schedule in, but then you get all ready and it's time for the meeting and they don't show up? Give me one in the comments if, if you have some, you know, like you feel like, man, not enough people are actually showing up for the appointments. We'll put no show in the comments. I'm going to give you guys a, a hack right here at this step in the process that will absolutely improve your show up rates. Got a couple of ones, a couple of no shows. I know, you know, it, it's, it's a challenge, right? What we want to do right before the appointment or at some point before the appointment that will absolutely improve the show up rate is make a personal connection, right? And so we can do that through SMS at some level. We can do that through some, through some of the video stuff. The very best thing I've seen to improve your show up rate to practically a 100% is to find that person on Facebook and LinkedIn and friend request them, right? Friend request them. And when they accept you, don't send a, an automatic message. Take out your cell phone and shoot a quick two-minute video or two, like a quick 30-second video. Hey, Paulson. Hey, I just saw you scheduled in for you know, Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Really excited about our appointment. I'm looking forward to connecting. Bam. Send that. If you spend a couple of minutes or your sales team spend a couple of minutes shooting a personalized video and uploading that through the high-level native, like you can hit the little the little button there and, and attach a video. And then you also send that either through Facebook Messenger or LinkedIn Messenger, you will significantly improve your show up rates for your appointments. So automation, but also a little bit of manual effort can go a long way in terms of really maximizing your show up for your appointments. Josh, can you, I know you um, mentioned this briefly on yesterday. Can you talk about omnipresent marketing for one quick second? Because a lot of us experience it, like we'll buy something on Amazon and the world is following us around on the internet as soon as you turn on a device and everybody's like, oh yeah, they're listening to us, right? So omnipresent right. marketing is something that we experience. We don't ever leverage it for our own businesses in any way, shape or form. Can you, can you um, unpack that for just a quick second? Absolutely, so I think there's two elements you can look at in terms of you know, establishing omnipresence. The first is, is just basic retargeting. Right? If somebody gets to your opt-in or they get to your website, or especially if they get to your appointment funnel page, we can drop a pixel on their site through, you know, through Google Tag Manager or whatever mechanism we want and spend money specifically on Facebook ads, YouTube ads, banner ads through Google, the Google Display Network. And it feels like now you're everywhere in their social feed, taking them to the next step in your funnel. Um, I think you know that's the most basic level of omnipresence you can have. You should absolutely do that. Kind of the step above that is if you think about your niche as a whole, right? We work with plumbing and HVAC companies. My goal is to be everywhere that plumbing and HVAC companies doing over a million dollars are, right? So that means I'm in their groups and associations. I'm at their live events. I'm putting on content specific to the industry. I'm interviewing the people that they look up to on podcasts. I'm doing webinars and showing up in their inbox. So really my goal is to be in their inbox, in their mailbox, at their live events, on their phone, and in their social feed. Um, and by doing that, you can become omnipresent, maybe not to the entire industry, but especially to the, the, the top prospects that you want to be in front of. Did that, was that what you were looking for there, Paulson? Yes, absolutely. And then you can add on direct mail you can add on fellow b2b partners affiliates that are talking about you but but at least at the smaller level start off with retargeting retargeting is pretty cheap okay 
It's not too expensive for you to just re relaunch ads to the same people, resent um, emails to the same list, um, sharing value and things like that. Thank you, Josh. Oh, that's that's great. And if you go back to yesterday, like that's really positioning yourself as the go-to expert is if we want, is what we want. And if they come to us through this process, having seen us, having seen our value in advance, they're going to be much more likely to buy. So the next, the next thing after the appointment is we want to have a hot lead follow-up. And I touched on this briefly yesterday, but I'd love to see in the comments, what is your average close ratio? Like from the people that you meet with through a demo call or through a consultative sales process, what's your average close ratio? I've seen, statistically speaking, there's a report that says the average close ratio for digital services is 12%. And I've heard people you know, say as much as 65, 70% if you've got a, a great sales process. So let's say it's somewhere between 12 and 70%. If you're a complete rock star, you've got great positioning, and you've got a really tight sales process. Christopher Scott Pierce says 65%, which would, be, which would be great. I think regardless, obviously, when they come and they, they go through our sales process, they meet with us, they're a good fit. We want to ask for the business, right? We're going to say, hey, does this make sense? Are you following everything we've talked about? Where do you think we should go from here, right? Okay, great. Let's get started. Get the credit card and move forward. But we know even the best of us have 30%. More, more likely, more likely, like the average is more like 60% of the prospects that get off that appointment and don't buy. I think most SaaSpreneurs, most agencies, they leave it at that. Like they didn't buy, so that's it. You know, if they're, when they're interested, they'll come back to me. What we found is if, if they came all the way through this process, if we can just be assertive, if we can remain top of mind, if we can ask for the business again and again, we're more likely to get the business. We found Almost 60% of our deals come from like the next two weeks after the sales call and sometimes longer than that. And so that being the case, why not engineer a hot lead follow-up? And this is just something that we, we do with the prospects we meet with in our sales process that say they're interested, but they don't give us the go-ahead. They don't give us the credit card. And so for us, this is a sequence of emails, obviously, right? Hey, thanks so much for your time on the, on the call yesterday. As we discussed, this is what we're going to do. This is our next step, right? You know, one of the things I wanted to send over was a couple examples and, and case studies. Hey, just in case you're curious, here's like five client references that you can reach out to in case you're just curious about what we do, right? Having those little nudges can really move things forward in a productive way, also, Josh, can you define what a hot lead follow-up is? Is that, are you sending them something? Is it more of like, let me quickly just send them a quick email and is that it? What's the extents of a hot lead follow-up in your world? In my mind, it's a two-week sequence after the sales call, moving them forward, being top of mind, filling in gaps, re-asking for the business, engineering reasons to get back on the call to actually close the deal, and then dropping something physical in the mail. Right. And I'm going to show visuals of this here in a second, but you know, like getting a package in the mail, most people aren't sending anything. That goes a long ways. And you can engineer this in advance. Um, so put HLF, hot lead follow up. If you feel like you could put something, some automation after the initial sales call that would have an impact on your ability to close more of the demos more of the deals that you're working with. Give me some engagement. Give me some engagement here, guys. The other thing I like to do on my lead follow-up is engineer tasks. So some of it is automatic messaging. Some of it is task-based. Hey, we just ran this report. In our world, let's say we'll run a, a ranking report through Bright Local or through Advice Local and be able to say, hey, you know what? In preparation for you know, getting started in your account, we ran this report. Here's some issues. I'd love to jump on a quick call to discuss next steps. And so we engineer a reason to get back on the call to continue the conversation. And then we also kind of set a countdown. What I found is on the sales call, almost everybody will say, you know, will say, hey, look, you know, I understand you want to think about this a little bit further. You got some other people you want to talk to. Can we agree that you make a decision one way or another in the next two weeks? 
And most of the time they're going to nod their head. They're going to be like, yep, I, I, I can. So knowing that you can say, okay, great. You can engineer all of your emails in this workflow back to the two weeks. So at the you know, 13 day mark, hey, Bill, just wanted to check in. You know, we have both agreed you'd make a decision one way or the other. Can we schedule a time to get on the meeting to, to move things forward, right? And usually if there's pretty interesting, you get that meeting booked. You kind of keep the, the ball moving forward. At day 14, you can send an email that says, hey, you know what? Unfortunately, I can, I can see you've decided not to move forward. We'd love to get some feedback on what we could have done differently so I can be better in the future, right? And kind of the takeaway process here through automations we find moves a lot of people over as well. They're like, no, it's not that I don't want to do it. I just hadn't had a time. So I'm glad you circled back. So I really want you guys to think about this. And I'm trying to emphasize some of the areas that I see agencies not really doing. And I think this hot lead follow-up is one opportunity that can really bridge the gap for these unconverted opportunities in their, in their businesses. Any questions or thoughts on this? And we're going to get into the specifics, but any questions or thoughts on, on just kind of a high level ultimate agency funnel? Paulson, anything you want to add? I think I'm good, Josh. I think you broke it down pretty simply and uh, people are understanding the flow here. Um, now, I guess we can go into the specifics of each step. Is that right? Is that what That's the plan. Doing? Yep, let's do it. So... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unpack five key principles on this, and then we'll get actual like live so you can see what this looks like in high level. Excuse me. And kind of how it all pieces together. So principle number one is we're starting with the end in mind, right? There's lots of cool marketing things we can do, right? Lead magnets, tripwires, you know, cross sales, upsells, webinars, live events, but if we think with the end in mind, being like, what do we want our marketing to lead to? The reality is we want it to lead to a demo or we want it to lead to a sale. And so if, if that's the case, we've got to engineer everything to get somebody on a one-to-one -one demo or a one-to-one -one sales call. Start with the end in mind. Number two is we've got to map the flow. Where we're going to reverse engineer what would they need to experience from us, first, second, third, fourth, so that they can come pre-positioned, right? What we don't want is just a quick meeting with somebody that has no context, no background, because that's gonna be high resistance like we talked about yesterday. So we wanna map the flow and the experience, the touch points, the key content that we want them to consume prior to the appointment, prior to the sales call, to improve the probability that they not only become a client, but they become a high quality client that perceives the value of our expertise and is gonna stick with us long-term. Number three, we've got to bait the hook, right? We want to make sure if we're going fishing, we don't want to put you know, just, the, you know, just the hook into the water, right? We want to put something that the fish really wants. And so that's where your lead magnet, really engineer, think through what would your prospects perceive value in, right? That could be a book, could be a lead magnet, could be uh, a cheat sheet, could be a guide, could be a case study, could be any variety of things. We spent some time with you guys keying in what you thought good lead magnets could be for you in your business. But we really want to bait the hook. Number four is we want to offer the shortcut. And I, I kind of showed you guys this visually, but regardless of where they enter in the funnel, from the opt-in to maybe watching a webinar or engaging with a piece of content, we always want to hop skip straight to the bottom of the funnel, which is, hey, if you need some help, let's schedule a one-to-one -one strategy session. So everything we do, we want to engineer this shortcut, right? I'm going to like give you real visuals of this as we go. And then we have to follow up on all fronts. So follow up through email, follow up through text, follow up through the automations built into high level, but we also want to follow up in the channels we can't access necessarily, right? So follow up on the phone, right? Pick up the phone and talk to these people. Follow up in mail, follow up on social messenger. Social messenger is an extremely powerful backdoor, right? We all get tons of calls. We all get lots of text messages. We're all inundated with emails. But the one channel almost everybody has open that they're reading, they're checking, at least in today's market as we're, we're sitting right now, is social messenger. Facebook messenger, LinkedIn messenger, Instagram messenger. So if you're not following up on all fronts, you're not going to be able to convert as many of the opportunities as you could. 
So I'd love to hear like insights on this, just on the, the five keys and kind of the high level of the, of the ultimate agency funnel. Any, any insights or what kind of post in the comments for you, what's, what's resonating with you so far? I can share, Josh. Uh, my awesome. big takeaway so far is attacking them on all fronts. You're not you're not trusting the fact that they replied to you on Instagram. Therefore, you're just completely assuming that's the proper channel for them to be conversating, right? Like you're yep. not now just omitting all the other channels. I think it's interesting that you would follow up on the phone, email, other channels. Uh, and 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 also the bait right the offer bait to me is where marketing agencies can get really creative you can have 10 15 different types of lead magnets and baits so as you kind of gradually progress into your launch um, you'll be able to figure out what the market really wants you'll find out one or two out of your best lead magnets are hot performing versus some of the others so now you can really move the needle on sales fronts with the ones that you have already proven. So those are my key takeaways so far, Josh. Um, hopefully that helps some people that are just listening in. Awesome. And uh, Jeff Middleton posted in the comments, amazing strategies, no brainer, way to increase ROI and ad spend and lead acquisition. Awesome. Um, Narid Day is asking, can you mention um, the tags for omnipresence? So I think what you're talking about there is you would put Google Tag Manager, Basically, it's a piece of code that can sit on, you know, any of the landing pages or websites that you control. Um, and then you would take the Facebook retargeting pixel, the Google, you know, ads, you know, pixel. You would grab the pixels from these different platforms so that you can specifically put budget towards the audience of people that have already gotten, you know, to you, right? They've seen some of your videos or they've gotten to your website um, because, now they're in your world, right? And we want to double down on that, right? We want to make sure they see us and we can, we can get really strategic with this, right? We can say they saw us, but they didn't request the lead magnet yet. So let's advertise our lead magnet. Or we could see that they saw us and they requested the lead magnet, but they haven't scheduled an appointment yet. At which point we might offer another lead magnet in the ads, or we might just say, hey, look, let's schedule a time to chat, right? I'd love to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and show you exactly what we can do to generate the results that you're after. So hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, yeah. The most popular ways that I'm seeing agencies do this is they have the funnel that Josh was just explaining. When they feel like a lead is stuck in any one of those funnel steps, they'll send messages out that's relevant to the step that they're stuck in, right? Notice that you didn't book an appointment, but glad that you opted in. Could we, could we reschedule, right? Or... Um, notice that you opted in for the lead magnet, but you didn't actually download and take the collateral. Is there something that we can review together? So they get really creative on every single step and have different messaging on those steps. Yep. Good stuff. Good stuff. So let's, let's get into the specifics of this. We've looked at this visually on the whiteboard and kind of what the, what the wireframe of it looks like. Type funnel in the comments if you're excited about kind of like actually seeing what these pages look like, see how these are structured inside of high level and really how you could structure something very similar in your business. Like I said, I want to go from high level to very specific, like let's let's look at this in detail. All right, I'm, I'm seeing some, some funnel stuff come in. So the, the opt-in funnel, the way we've got it structured, I'm going to talk about the tech stack here. I'm going to talk about kind of the, the different lead magnets that have worked best for us. The way we, the way we have it structured, we have two lead magnets that we lead with. Because um, I like to think of it in terms of like at the bottom of the funnel, they're ready to do business, right? They're ready, they, they've already kind of seen some stuff from us and the lead magnet there is like take them straight to strategy session. Kind of the intermittent opportunity would be there, they want information, but they're willing to kind of invest some time. So maybe that's a webinar, or maybe that is a book, right? So I talked about you know, the book being one of the great lead magnets that you can put in place. Um, and then you want something very simple at the very highest level, something that they could look at and be like a checklist. Yeah, I would like a checklist or I would like a cheat sheet or I would like a guide. And so you know, this is, it could be baked into your website. You can have a specific landing page for it. And it's just a visual opt-in for this checklist. We call this the ultimate online marketing checklist for plumbing and HVAC contractors. Um, an example here, um, checklist example of uh, bug biz marketing, right? Very, very similar 
but it's visually appealing and it's something that would kind of stand out. Paul, so do you have an example of a, of a great lead magnet for the SaaS specific, the SaaSpreneur? Well, what I think you should do as a marketing agency is lead with what you would do if you were to advertise marketing services. That's the magic trick if you ask me as a SaaSpreneur. You don't go in like a regular software company like High Level or Salesforce or you know any Infusionsoft, any companies like that because you're dealing with a whole different batch of competition, right? So I personally think you lead with the lead magnets that you would as if you're selling Facebook ad services. And that's what makes you unique. If they jump on a call with you, guess what you can do? Well, before we talk about traffic, let's talk about consolidating your current opportunities. And if it makes sense for you to talk about traffic, let's, you know, you kind of pull them back and reset their stage. But what I'm seeing a lot of SaaS companies or high level SaaSpreneurs do is uh, really leverage the marketing agency lead magnets and they don't have, you know, they don't put together, hey, here's a checklist for automations. The reason why they don't do that is because it doesn't really differentiate you. It's like a pain point that's kind of touched, but it's not really elevating you from the pr prospect's perspective. And that's what I'm seeing so far. Love it. Love it. And we'll try and ping back and forth to kind of share examples from the, the very SaaS specific versus the agency specific, but it works either way, right? You could go either direction with it. The, the appointment funnel in, in our world is video based like this. I talked about having a video that auto plays. Hey, if you're ready to take your plumbing or HVAC business to the next level, I'd like to offer you a, a free lead flow acceleration session, right? Where we'll look at where you're at today, where there's room for improvement and help you map out a plan to double, triple, or quadruple the lead flow that you get via the internet. That sounds good. Enter the details on the side here and we'll schedule a time to chat, right? So we really wanna sell this process. I'll show you the landing page itself. Let's just kind of scroll down and you've got copy as well because not everybody wants to watch the video. You wanna have the video and some copy to go along with it. Um, the survey piece is optional, right? Depending upon how much lead flow you've got, depending upon how busy you are in your, in your business, you may just have the embed of the calendar right there in your appointment funnel, right? For a long time, that's what we did. Um, we're very specific. We work with plumbing and HVAC companies and we want plumbing and HVAC companies doing over a million dollars per year. And so having a survey in advance that asked, are you a plumbing or HVAC business? And then, you know, are you doing at least half a million dollars a year in revenue gave us the opportunity to use logic Whereas if they said, no, they, they're one man operation, we can send them down a different track. We don't want to have our schedule filled with unqualified prospects. If that sounds confusing to you right now, skip it, go straight to calendar. If you're busy with unqualified appointments, this might be exactly what you need, right? You might need to pre-qualify your appointments a little bit before they get onto your schedule. And it's very easy in the survey builder to set the logic up based on those answers. Like the way we do it today is if they don't have at least half a million dollars in, in revenue and they're, they're like not at least five technicians in the field, those are the knockout questions. It takes them to a different page that says, hey, you know what? Our agency services might not be a fit for you right now, but we've got this amazing platform called Conversion Amp, right? which is our white label high level. And it takes them down to a demo strategy session for that. So we can convert some of our unqualified leads. If they answer the way we want them to, like we know that they're doing half a million, they've got more than one technician in the field, then they're going to get on our strategy session calendar for our um, for agency services. Give me a one if that helps or like kind of that distinction there, kind of how you can structure this. But, you know, at the most basic level, we're selling them on the appointment and we're making it easy for them to schedule in. Cool. Um, and then we've got a hot lead follow-up. So this is, you know, when we met with them, they expressed some level of interest. We've got the, the sequence of communication. I'll show you this in high level here in a minute. And then we send a package, right? We've you know, improved this package over time, but it's something physical that gets mailed out, a copy of our book, some case studies and examples, so that after that meeting, they've got something physical and it, and it just kind of re-triggers them. You know, I was interested in doing business with these guys. They did have a quality sales process and now they're following through in my mailbox, which just creates a really professional outcome. So I just want to pause for a minute because I think this is a good opportunity for you to think about what your funnel looks like today, 
Like, and just breaking it down into opt-in, is there something valuable that you're offering, book, guide, cheat sheet, case study? Do you have that where they can opt in, enter their details and have a sequence? Do you have your appointment funnel dialed in, like where they can schedule in, get re, you know, excited about what's going to happen on the appointment and get reminded? And then do you have some type of hot lead follow-up, like where after the appointment, you're, you're following up with them automatically, right? And the reason I want to pause here is because I think this gives you a chance to recognize what, what the opportunity is and what actions you will take. How much time should we pause here, Paulson? I don't want to go too long, but I also want to go too short. Yeah, maybe one or two minutes, I think, will be suffice. Um, one thing I'm thinking about, Josh, as you kind of map this out is you have to think about the prospect's journey and the cycle that they're going through. And there's a story that they're taking part of, right? So when you, like, if you're thinking about lead magnets, right, you want to make sure the lead magnets complement the story of what you're actually going to do. For example, if you were doing a calendar system for appointments, right, the relevant lead magnet would be the best scheduling practices for the plumbers, right? I Top five scheduling practices, because now scheduling and calendars kind of go together, right? Yep. If you're, you're going to do Eliza and sales as a service, what you want to do is talk about the best way to recruit closers for your plumbing business. Like you need to kind of create a relevant story that will move them through. So when they do get a bunch of downloads, it's not a bunch of junk that they're downloading just to get through the next step. They're actually experiencing the prospect journey. So when they do get in front of you, guess what? Now you're just catching an alley-oop off the system and you're just doing slam dunks left and right instead of having to re-enter them into different cycles and creating some kind of a confusion. Does that make sense, guys? Josh, feel free to add to that. No, I think that's exactly right, right? We want to create the narrative. The, the, the lead magnet should be congruent with what you're trying to position them to potentially buy without being co completely on the nose. Uh, so I, I thought that was perfect. Give me a one if this gave you an opportunity to pause for a minute and like, because I, what I find is insights happen in the pause points as we reflect, not necessarily as we're learning it. We got one, Will says one. Okay, good. So we want these insights to fire. We want you to be able to walk away and be like, okay, I know my funnel needs some work, right? But not an infinite supply of things to work. Like this isn't complicated. What I'm outlining for you guys, you can all do. This is a simple three-step funnel, but it just takes a little bit of effort, right? It has to be built. Excellent. Okay, good. So we had a chance to think about that. What I want to do next is, is go even deeper on this with you guys. Uh, I'm going to talk tech stack, and then Paulson and group, if you want me to, we'll pull this up in high level, and I'll show you exactly what it looks like inside of our system and how we stitch everything together. Um, so opt-in funnel, right? We talked about this kind of being where they opt in. The key elements that you need in order to bring this into the real world are a couple of things. First, you need the lead magnet, right? And it starts with figuring out what the, what the topic would be. But at the end of the day, your lead magnet is the PDF. It's the book. It's the actual document. In a lot of cases, it's, it's a document, right? And so that's the lead magnet. Usually what I do with the lead magnet is I would put it up on Google, um, Google Drive as a PDF, and then I can grab that link and add it into high level, and that's where they go to download it, right? So we need that actual lead magnet that we're going to deliver to the prospect. Don't overthink it, but make it look good, right? Make it useful. You know, this is the, the beginning of their relationship with you. It could also be a video, right? If it's a case study, you need to record the video. And you can either put that up on YouTube as unlisted, or you could put it on Wistia, right? You need the actual deliverable of the lead magnet itself. The next thing you're going to need is the hero graphic. So if you look at this opt-in screen here, this piece over here isn't the lead magnet itself. It's a picture. It's a visual representation, right? So you have to design it, right? And you could use somebody on Fiverr. You could use somebody on Upwork. You could hire a graphics designer. Right, but you want to have the actual lead magnet and then you want a visual of it, right? So in this case, it's, it's a screenshot of the thing with some arrows pointing to it. If it was a, like a video, it would be a screen cap of me, like what I'm about to explain, right? Pointing at something 
So they see a visual of what it is that they're going to get, right? We have to create that. The next thing is we need the opt-in page, right? Which in, in high level is your, is your page in the funnel where they can see what they're going to get. They can read about it. They can click the button and they can see the web form where they can enter their name, their email, their cell phone number, or the web form on Facebook where they can do that. We need the opt-in page that's engineered. Oops. And then we need the confirmation page, right? The page they get to after they've opted in, we want to record a confirmation video, right? We told you this is the shortcut here. We want to say, hey, thanks so much for requesting the ultimate checklist. If you're like most plumbing HVC companies, click this button right here and let's schedule a time to chat, right? Where I can show you exactly how you would implement this. And then we need the sequence or the workflow, right? The sequence of communications, emails, text messages, and tasks that are going to happen after they've opted in. Give me a clear if that's clear. Like sometimes... I'm, I, I've done this enough that sometimes I'm like, hey, I just explained it. And then people are like, oh, but I didn't realize I would actually need to create a document. I would need to then create a visual version of it. And so hopefully this just kind of fills in some gaps as we, as we go deeper on this. Uh, the technology that we use for the opt-in is pretty simple, right? And the beautiful part is we're, we're using high level for this entire process, right? So you have this, this system, right? The landing pages, all in high level. You know, all of it built in high level. The, um, the follow-up sequence, email, SMS, the whole nine yards, high level, used to have used number of systems in order to do that same thing, right? Have emails happening here, text messages happening over there. Um, voice, I think I try to use a voice drop right after somebody opts in because most people haven't experienced that and they're impressed that you're that quick to follow up via SMS, email, and a quick voice, my, hey, I just saw you requested my thing. I sent it to you via email. I wanted to make sure you got it. Shoot me a quick text message back when you, when you receive it. This is built in the high level. It takes two seconds, but people are always impressed. Like, especially if you know, you're not selling to agencies, but you're selling to the plumber, the roofer, the AC contractor. This is next level. This is high level stuff. Um, pipeline management. And I'm going to talk about this because I think it's really important. Don't just have your leads funnel in and send alerts. Drop them on a pipeline so that you can follow up. We do all of that right within high level. Um, the only thing we do outside of high level is where the pages sit. So we set up our custom domain and then we use the lead connector to connect it to our, to our, our root domain. So plumberseo.net slash book, for instance, which I'll show you the page, that's connected to our main domain through the lead connector plugin. So it sits on our website, which is built in WordPress. Um, hopefully I'm not getting too granular with this. Um, give me some feedback. One, if this is too granular, two, if you feel like this is good, you like, like, like the extra details here, um, just so I can have some context as to you know, whether I'm going too deep. All right, I'm seeing two, so that's a good indication, uh, Paulson. Yeah, I, I wanna share something really funny with you. And I think it's, you know, you're a practitioner of what you do. Like, I think this is like 2000, 15 or 16 I remember seeing your ads Josh around the plumbing industry and you had your lead magnet printed out you can tell it's like in a ring binder and you would hold it like this well this is just a random piece of paper I picked up and he would hold it like this and talk about what's in it and he would open it up and it just created like this crazy psychological experience and I'm like who is this marketer printing out a bunch of stuff running ads against what's in the thing and you can download it on the funnel that you're on and it's just a digital file right but the experience is like oh i just feel like i got a book from josh right it was such a like psychological play to me and i always always loved it like and this is this is when i was funnel hacking plumbing hvac back in the day trying to learn processes i think it's like 2015 i want to say oh that's cool i didn't know you funnel hacked me that's awesome <laughs> it was it was so clever because nobody was doing this and guess what nobody is still doing this <laughs> yeah and that's the reality 100 percent. like this seems like basic stuff but the reality is you guys are marketers you guys are the best of the best right most of you haven't built it. So this is a massive opportunity to get in here and get this stuff built. You've got the technology, you've got the know-how. Now it's just put the, the horsepower in to do it. I think to Paulson's point, make it tangible, right? We, all, we live in a digital world and yes, they're going to get a digital PDF, but if you can hold the thing up and like make it, make it 
tangible, it just seems that much more compelling to the prospects. Okay, the next part is the, is the appointment funnel. Actually, any questions on, on, on like Quan, what we we're talking about there with the opt-in piece and the kind of the tech stack? I think that's all pretty self-explanatory. Yeah? Okay, appointment funnel, technology that we put in place here. We've got the calendar, obviously, which is right inside of high level. We want to spend some time on this confirmation page. And um, I want to show you guys the visual of kind of how I structure this. Like I said, we want an autoplay video there right after they've they pick the date and the time, right? They pick Tuesday at 3. That next page, we're telling them above the fold, your session is confirmed. Add this to the calendar. You should have a video that autoplays, ideally. You know, if you do this with Wistia, if you do this with YouTube, there's going to be some sound issues where they might not hear it. You might want to have some text underneath that says, you know, unmute. But you want an autoplay video that confirms the appointment, sets the expectation for what's going to happen next, make sure that they actually show up on time. And then below the fold, like we've got case studies. We've got, you know, here's what we did for Meridian Company. Here's what we did for Valley Plumbing. Here's what we did for the plumbing doctor. Here's what I found. If I can get them to watch one of those case studies before the appointment, they're much more likely to, to buy, right? Because they're like, you know what? I, I listened to what you did for the plumbing doctor and I was in that same situation, right? And I want that outcome. So, and again, these are things you build over time. You might not have case studies and testimonial videos just yet. You want them and you, then you want to use them in this way on the confirmation page. Um, John's asking if we can use ClickFunnels for the initial opt-in and video and then lead them to a survey and appointment. You could. I mean, all of this can be built in, in high level. I mean, you could do it. And, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, what's ClickFunnels? What are we talking about? I don't know. What do you say? <laughs> and so I've already showed this a couple of times, right? So what's happening is they're seeing the video. Here's the appointment that's going to happen. Here's why you want to do it. Then they're picking the time, right, which is just our calendar. And then they're getting to the confirmation, which is warming them up. Another little thing that we do is we want to aggregate our audience, right? So we've got them in our CRM in, in high level. We also want to try and aggregate them on Facebook. So if you're running enough ads, if you're doing enough of this type of stuff, tell them to join a Facebook group as well and get all of your prospects into a Facebook group. It's another channel that you can nurture them through. It's another channel that you can, um, you can work with them on. So the key elements here for this, for this appointment funnel um, obviously the confirmation video. I'm going to talk a little bit about the scripting because I find this is where people get stuck. Oh, I want a confirmation video, but I don't, don't know what to say. So I'm going to give you guys uh, some scripting for that. The link to the calendar, like the place where they can book in, native inside of a high level. The pre-appointment questionnaire, which is just your survey where you're trying to you know, like decide whether they're a good fit or not, optional for everybody. Um, indoctrination emails. Right? Don't just let your emails be the, the automatic, hey, you're scheduled for Tuesday at two. Hey, we're starting now, click here to log in. You want to warm them up in advance. And that's indoctrination. That's like, here's what we do. Here's what we're, what we're, we're all about. Here's the results that we've gotten. You want to keep it small, like you can't get crazy with it, but you need to indoctrinate them with the communication in addition to reminding them to show up. Um, SMS communication. And then I didn't have a bullet for it, but also kind of shooting that video, shooting a little, hey, I see you scheduled, right? Hey, I see you scheduled. I'm looking forward to meeting you. What I recommend is making that a task. Make that a task either inside of high level, or if you've got a VA that maybe you're, you're tasking through um, Trello or some other system, make it an automatic task where they're going to look that person up. They're going to friend request them on Facebook, or they're going to friend request them on LinkedIn. And then once they've accepted, they would message you and say, hey, go record the video. Or you do it yourself. Like, I've got a task. I've got an appointment coming up tomorrow. I'm going to shoot this video. Because I know doing that video makes me different than all of the other agencies or all the other SaaS companies they're going to meet with. And they're much more likely to show up. I just want you to type me in comments if you're going to do that. Like, I promise, test this on your next 10 appointments. Shoot a quick video before. You will see a higher show up rate. So give me a me in the comments if you're committed to, to do that leading up to your appointments. Okay, me's coming in. This will make you more money, I, I promise. So Josh, just, just real quick, um, 
for those of you that may not have a lot of case studies, okay, focus on getting that strong case study, okay? So once you have that, you'll have context in these steps that you can add. Until then, your messaging is not going to be strong. No matter what you do or say, it's going to be like, you know, it's going to be like a a story that could possibly happen, but it's not sure. Like it's like an uncertain story, right? Hey, here's what I'll do for you based on our conversation. But if I say, you know what, this is what I did for Will, or this is what I did for Jeff, and here's how we took them from this scenario to that scenario, it's a more compelling story. So have this structured out. Don't worry about not having all the pieces in place. Build out the structure as you get your case studies, add that into the funnels, okay? Uh, don't let that stop you from creating a funnel or a filtering system for your sales conversations. Yep, and we talked about this yesterday, like your first focus is to get those case studies, knock it out of the park, get some tangible wins, and then further position yourself. So I think that's good, especially for those that are kind of logging in today and kind of like, I don't have any of that stuff yet. Where do I, where do I start? Cool. All right. So what I want to, I want to get into now is this, this confirmation video um, and this confirmation process. Um, a little bit of scripting here without getting over complex. Because again, a lot of times agents are like, I get it, but I know what I would say on that video. Really what we want to do is first, we want to congratulate them. Hey, congratulations. I, you know, you're scheduled for, you know, we've got you booked into the calendar for your appointment. We want to talk about the possibilities, right? When we meet, we're going to be looking at what you have in place, what your goals are, where you're looking to go, and really pinpoint what you need to do. Pinpoint like where there's disconnects either in your current process, disconnect in what you've got in place, and we'll give you an action plan, like a very specific action plan of what you can do to hit those goals, to hit those targets that you've set for yourself. You're going to leave very clear, you know, feeling very clear on what needs to happen next and where you're headed. Here's what I want you to do to prepare to get the most from the meeting, right? I want you to watch a couple of the case studies below, block this into your calendar, and join our Facebook group if you have a group. You know, give them like no more than three tasks to do prior to the appointment. So this is just a simple framework on what you can say on that confirmation page so that you're not fumbling for the words. Don't script this and read it. Make it feel like you're talking to Paulson. You're talking to a very specific person on any of these videos that you shoot. Landy, Landy's asking if you can spotlight me. Am I, am I looking small for some of you guys? Put small if I'm small on the screen wherever you're watching this right now. No, you're good. You're, you're pinned. If okay. Whoever said that, if you go to the top right corner of the Zoom and go to speaker view instead of gallery view, you'll be able to see the spotlight. All right. Well, it says good. Okay. So this is the sequence of communications. Basically, we've got an email confirmation email that goes out right away. Hey, you're confirmed Tuesday at three o'clock. Use the automation so that it, it pins the actual date and time. Text message, I wait two minutes and I drop a quick text message. Um, cool trick, if you've got a salesperson, um, or, or even if you don't, the first one is say you're confirmed. The second one is, is take a picture of whoever it is that's like the face of the business, my case in plumbing and HVAC SEO. I'm the face, they see me on video, they're developing a relationship with me, but obviously they're gonna meet with the salesperson at the point of appointment. Um, I include an image of me and my sales guy right there, and I kind of edify that person leading into the appointment. You know, Christian is, is you know, our, our top director of business development. He works with all of our clients on the way in. So if you've got a sales team, you know, there's gonna be a little bit of a friction point, you know, in that transition from you to the sales guy. Try and edify that person and you're going to get better show-ups and better, better results on that front. Um, and then, of course, we're going to indoctrinate. Hey, watch this before the meeting. That either that's, in my case, if you look up the Plumbing and HVAC SEO pre-appointment video, I draw out our model. You drive leads, maximize conversion, leverage automation. And then I tell them, like, rate yourself on a you know, red, yellow, green, how good you're doing on this. Right? And it makes them think, prior to the meeting, oh, you know what? I'm doing well driving leads with SEO, but we're failing on pay-per-click. Um, I've got some automations in place, but I'm not really following up in this way, or I've got you know these things missing. That's a little bit more advanced, but 
you could just have them watch a couple of testimonials prior to the appointment, but whatever you can do to kind of get them pre-framed for what it is that you're going to be offering, the, the better. And then of course, starting now, don't forget the starting now message. Hey, we're really looking forward to our meeting. Either click here to log in on Zoom or, you know, I'll be calling you in a second, right? Really, really set this up in advance. Um, show up campaign, really, really important kind of what we're doing here tech stack wise. Landing page is on high level. We keep all of this in high level. I can show this live as we have time at the end. Appointment calendar in high level, obviously. Email confirmations, all coming from high level. Uh, text messages, high level. Social connections, again, I talked about this. You're going to want to create a task on Trello or Zapier for you or somebody on your team to look that person up, connect with them. There's no automation from a person-to-person -person connection. So that's a manual task that has to be done. Um, Timing-wise, you know, this visual, hopefully you guys can see this. Timing-wise, we want to confirm right away. We want to wait about two to five minutes for the text message. About 15 minutes later is where you drop that additional thing. Hey, go watch this video to prepare. Or, hey, I want you to read my book. Or, I want you to prepare in this way. Kind of That way, it doesn't feel like you hit everything right at once. I send another set of additional resources that the night before at 4.45. Hey, you know... Really looking forward to our meeting. I'd, I'd love it if you'd watch this video before we meet. Have you had a chance to watch it? Morning of 9 a.m. and then 15 minutes prior. And then as soon as possible, you want you, you or your team member to connect with them on Facebook or LinkedIn, both. And then you can't, don't send them the video if they haven't accepted you. Like wait until they've accepted you as a friend and then shoot your, shoot your video. Give me, give me a one in comments if this is helpful. I know I'm like going very specific here, but I said I was going to go high level and then get eye level. Hopefully this is helpful to get this granular uh, with it. Yeah, we're seeing it. We're seeing a good amount of ones coming in, Josh. Awesome. Yeah, they're, they're good to go. And I also realized what I was doing, the, the way I was viewing is the way Facebook is streaming. Ah, Zoom. so if they're on Facebook, they were seeing me small. If they were here in Zoom. Yeah. I just need to make sure I'm on speaker view so everybody can see that view. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. So I'm getting more ones. Good. I'm glad you guys are getting value. Really, I want this to be practical. I want you to be able to see, okay, this is a simple three-step process. There's lots of nuance to it, um, but it's not super complicated. Like you can build this. You can put this in place. It will get more people to show up on your calendar, pre-positioned to buy, leading to more clients on the other end. So the other really important element, and actually in our agency, we didn't start doing this until we got high level, was to drop all of your opt-ins, everything in the funnel onto a pipeline. Um, you know, I, I had another platform in the past and we would do our advertising and people would opt in and then I would get an email and my sales guy would get an email. That was it. And we would get that email and we would try to call the person. And when you've got a bunch of people opting in, it's very hard to keep track, right? It's, you can easily lose a lot of opportunity. And automation helps, right? You've got emails happening and text messages happening. But if you're going to be intentional with your sales process, you want to drop it onto the pipeline. So when they opt in, in the workflow, the first thing you want to do is, is drop it into your sales pipeline. And you could get super complicated with the, with the pipeline. I, I like to keep it relatively clean. The first step for me is opted in. Opted in is like they requested the book, they requested the guide, they requested a webinar, they, they opted in in some way. We get tons of opt-ins, right? A lot of them aren't qualified, a lot of them aren't a good fit. And so we have a VA, uh, an appointment center, whose sole function is to go through our opt-ins and look those people up. Try and call them, try and look them up online, try and see if they're a qualified opportunity. If they are, they get moved to qualified lead, right? And that's... Either you or somebody on your team should be constantly trying to see of our people who's qualified to do business with us. That way you can see these are our qualified opportunities that we want to move to scheduled strategy session, either through the automations or through manual calls, manual emails, manual text messages, right? You want to be working the pipeline. I talked about this yesterday. It's not just generating opportunity. This is where the money is made. The money is made is in moving people along the spectrum from interested to opted in to scheduled strategy session. Once they schedule their strategy session, these are the people that have met or are going to meet. And then if they're interested, we move them to hot lead follow-up. And so as we move our opportunities to hot lead follow-up, this is where our hot lead follow-up campaign is triggered, right? This is where that send them the welcome box, send them the, the sequence of communication 
all happens. This makes a big difference. Whether you're doing it yourself or you have a sales team, this gives you control of the process. You can report against what's happening in your funnel if you drop it onto the pipeline and you think strategically about working the pipeline. So I'll link follow up again, you know, we've got the sequence of events, we've got the package that's dropped. Um, tech stack, because I get questions about this every single time. Um, follow up emails, obviously, with the countdown to close, right? We want to engineer that so that it's like, this person's going to say yes or no by 14 days in. And that does a couple of things, right? The first positive thing it does for you is it, it gives you the opportunity to take away the sale. Hey, you know, it's, it's been two weeks. You said you were going to make a decision. You didn't. I'm sorry, we couldn't do business. We find a lot of people take the next step. But the other really powerful thing this countdown to close does is it lets you off the hook mentally. Like I, I think a lot of people, they, they do sales process. They get people scheduled in. They have meetings. The person says, hey, I'm kind of interested. I'll be back in touch. And then it sits in this stage in the pipeline forever. Oh, maybe one day this one's going to convert. How many of you guys feel like you've got like an endless loop on some of your sales opportunities, right? If they don't buy in two weeks, they're probably not going to buy, right? And they may reemerge at some point in the future, but they're probably not going to buy. And so forcing yourself to disconnect opportunities after two weeks helps you focus on the real deals that are in motion, the real deals that are probably going to come into fruition. So don't, don't miss, it's a simple nuance, but be sure to take people off your pipeline as lost after two weeks. Clear your, clear your pipeline so you know what's in play. We send the shock and all box via the mail uh, and we've, we've improved this over time, but basically one time we put together a little kit of all the resources, which would be like our testimonials, a nice little pamphlet explaining our process and a copy of our book and a little letter. Hey, thanks so much for your time. It was great talking with you. You seem like you're gonna be a great fit for our services. Really excited about helping you take your business to the next level, right? I'll be touching base with you next week. Simple as that. And we sent it off to a mailhouse. So they warehouse this stuff for us. They've got the, the digital files, which they print on demand. And then they've got the books, right? Which is like included in all of our kits. And all we have to do is set up a internal alert inside the workflow that emails the mailhouse, hey, mail this person, this kit, right? And it happens automatically every time we move somebody to the hot lead follow-up in our sales process. Uh, the company we use is um, City Blueprint out of Wichita, Kansas. Um, but don't get hung up on the provider, right? There's lots of people that can do this for you. That's just who we use. Um, so tr this is triggered via the move in the pipeline, which I showed you visually, like how you would do that. And we use the company City Blueprint for mailing this stuff out. And it's through an internal alert. And I, I say this because if you're really in the tech and you're like, okay, how, how do I send it so it goes out? You said in the, in the workflow, internal alert, external email. Um, and I can show that visually, but once you know that that's how it works, this becomes an extremely easy thing to have an email, text message, and mail going out to anybody that you want in your process or in your flow. Anything you want to add on this, uh, Paulson? Yeah, I mean, the, the big thing that we're trying to achieve here, guys, is filtering between active buyers versus interest buyers. Those are two different buyers. They may still buy from you at some point, but you just don't know the timeline and you don't know their budget and how, how, how deep of a problem do they have, right? So Josh's method here is gonna really filter out anybody that's just kind of interested, not sure if they're gonna jump in today or six months or a year from now with the digital program you may have and just turn them into active buyers who are on a 14 day cycle that says yes or no, get out of my way. Right, that's really the mentality that's happening. So it's a, this is something that agencies don't really do is differentiating between active buyers and interest buyers. And we all have pretty false expectation of what the true sales cycles are, okay? Just wanted to add that on. Awesome. I, so I can do one of two things here. I can answer questions or I can pull this up in high level and kind of show you how I have a couple of the landing pages and the workflow structured so you guys can kind of connect that final dot on that point. Paul Center Group, like, let me know in the comments. 
Yeah, one well, one thing we can do is do a Q and A, and okay. uh, maybe what you can do is just drop the links or whatever, or however you want to drop it. I don't want to go into the tech side of it if we don't Perfect. have to. Got it. Um, but yeah, if you guys that are in the Zoom session that are watching so um, closely, do you have any questions that you want to maybe ask? If you want to unmute yourself, this is a good time to take a little bit of time and do a Q and A. Raise your hand and I'll call on your name if that's okay. Chris, Christopher's asking average cost per lead um, on a funnel like this. That's going to run the gamut, right? Because it depends upon your lead source, right? If you're running Facebook ads, that's one cost. If you're running Google ads, that's another cost. If it was somebody that came into the funnel for me targeting, that's a different cost. If it actually was someone you met at a trade show or an event, or it was more from a broad, long-term, you know, omnipresence play, it, it really, it runs the gamut. We find our average cost to acquire an agency-based client um, is somewhere in the $1,200 range. Yeah, I had somebody who uh, at the Saspreneur Mastermind tell me, Paul, so, you know, one of those sessions you had mentioned cost of acquisitions around 800 and that kind of frightened me and we have Josh here confirming that it's even higher sometimes depending on the sources uh, but when it comes to SaaS guys it might be a little lower depending on what you're trying to do and depends on the market and the offers um, but like Josh said it depends on the source if you're doing cold emailing or if you're doing personal branding those are areas that you can kind of cheapen down on the cost of acquisitions so and you have a launch plan okay so early on don't jump into ads you just yet ready? confirm I those offers so. so let's go with um, Landy first that's in the group Landy how are you where are you checking in from hello um, Tucson Arizona how are you oh, guys wow. Oh, Very what's good. Your question. Yeah, my question is um, regarding like the multi omnipresent channel um, approach, which I can um, appreciate, and we actually started doing that. I was just wondering if there's ever been um, like any feedback um, okay. from people that it's a little too much or can kind of be seen a little bit aggressive or stalkery. Yeah. So I was just wondering if, you know, there's been that type of feedback and how we kind of handle that. Cause I think it's a great approach. And um, so, I, listen, Landy, yeah. I think it's a great question. There's always going to be people that feel like they're getting too many emails. They're seeing you too frequently, right? That's, you know, you're going to play a game of being, um, you know, like anonymous, nobody knows you, nobody's seen you, or you can be like really, really aggressive and you can be out there in the industry. It's very hard to be in the middle, right? I mean, so you choose your battle, either be anonymous or be known, right? And I choose to be known. And so if they don't want to see you anymore, they can opt out, right? They can un, you know, unfriend you, they can block you on Facebook and they wouldn't see your stuff, right? Um, you're going to get much more lead flow, much more deal flow, much more success by erring on the side of being over aggressive um, than being you know, too timid. Yeah, and also, also remember... I'm sorry. Uh, also, also remember a lot of these things that you're building is for somebody who already opted in, right? We haven't talked a lot about outbound cold strategies. So you're not really spamming somebody. You're actually providing value to somebody that already opted into your ecosystem. That's a two different, it's, it, you know, it's a whole different psychology because they, they know something about you for them to come in somehow, right? So I, I would go aggressive. I, I would go extremely aggressive to capture their attention because they've showed some kind of an interest. You just got to qualify and see if they're an active buyer or not. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, we, we just started our cold outreach because we're still in the startup phase. So, um, but yes, thank you for clarifying that. It makes sense. Thank you. Excellent. Awesome. Great question. Um, let's go with Nariada. Is, it, is that, did I say that right? Narada. Narada. Okay. Narada. All right. Where are you checking in from? And Zoom, I have it. I have the um, phonetic spelling so that you guys can tell. You see it? It's there now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm uh, calling in from Connecticut. Um, my question was, and I posted it in the, in the Facebook, so just ignore that. But my question was, um, 
can we just for the you know how you were josh you were mentioning the confirmation for a client that tries to that's setting up an appointment and you just shoot a candid you know video hey you know you thanks for signing up and you know for the appointment yep can we just create one candid video confirming the appointment and just keep recycling it like use it over and over again like include it in the funnel i would encourage you against it right so the whole point of that message is to feel very custom and so if you you want to name the person in their business i should have said that in the video okay. um yeah you can have it automatic because there's lots of automatic confirmations they're getting but the purpose of this one is for it to be like, hey, Noreta, I saw you just scheduled in. I'm really, you know, our team's really excited about meeting with you and learning more about your agency and how we can help you take things to the next level. Do you see how that's a totally different feel than a, a, you can tell when it's anonymous, like a, a generic video? Right. That's true. Okay. All right. Thank you. And there's good, better, best, right? You know, sometimes you don't have time, right? And, you know, the automatic messaging is going to get them better is when you custom shoot a video and send it out. But I think that's a, it's a good question. I'm glad you asked. Guys, when you shoot that, that video, yeah. make it a custom thing, right? You don't want it to be long. You want to call out the name of the person and their business, right? That way it really can, it can be seen that this is a custom thing. Good. Yeah, and, and right, you want to humanize Thank it. You. you want to humanize it as much as you can, right? So yes. it's okay to hold your dog and drop something <laughs> and make it kind of very It natural. shouldn't be fancy. Yeah, right. it, it, it's not supposed to be a fancy video, right? right. But just keep it professional at the end of the day. Okay. That, that goes that goes far. All right. Great Let's go with Great Abigail. question, Rita. All right. Thank you. Let's go with Abigail. Yes. Um, so my question, oh, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Ah, yeah, so my question has to do with what is the best way to approach your client to get a video testimony? Um, mm -hmm. I, I kind of, sometimes people are even reluctant to give just a, a review that they just write, but the video, that's kind of like going a little bit deeper in, but I see the difference with using a video testimony versus just putting in their review there. So do you offer them like a, uh, an incentive for them to, to go the extra mile and do a video testimony for you? We don't, we don't personally, I think the easiest way to do this is, you know, frame in advance. Look, you know, I want to knock it out of the park for you. If we do a great job, would you be willing to kind of share some feedback and maybe be a client case study for us? Like you frame that in the sales process, you frame that in the onboarding call, and they feel like it's a, it's a thing you're doing together. I think that's a good play. The easiest way to get a video testimonial is, is to get a Zoom session going, right? If you tell them, hey, go record me a video, I find that like very few clients will do that. But if you say, hey, you know, I'd like to feature your success. Can you just come on a quick Zoom session with me? I'll ask you some questions. We'll make it very informal. They'll usually be like, sure, I'll do that. And then just have four or five questions that you ask. Hey, Abigail, thanks so much for joining me on, the, on this. Like, tell us a little bit about your business, where you're from. All right. Hey, listen, we started working together about a year ago or six months ago, three months ago. Tell us about what was going on in the business then. On oh, they, they talk. All right. So when you were trying to decide, you know, obviously you were looking at different options. What made you decide to go with us? And they'll talk a little bit about that. And then say, so well, how has it been working with us? Like, what's been the results? And they'll talk a little bit about, oh, you, know, you guys did this and you did that. And this is the results that we've gotten. Um, and then you, I usually like to say, is there anything else you'd like to add, right? And then there's usually some great like little tidbits that they say there. So I, I answered this in a longer way than probably Paulson than I should have, but that's the way I would approach it. See them in advance, get them on a Zoom session, have five, you know, four or five questions that you ask on Zoom. And then you can take the snippets from that interview and you're going to have a wonderful video-based testimonial that you can use for your marketing, for your pre-sales process and everything else. Yeah, and and okay. early on when I was Thank starting you. out, yeah, and Abigail, early on when I was starting out in dentistry, like I didn't have a ton of case studies, but I started building relationship with these dental practices just because dentistry is like such a conference oriented in person meeting type of space. So if you meet them in person, you can make a lot of friends in dentistry. It doesn't mean they're going to be your clients. So what I would do is feature them in my like intersect, you know, uh, interactions. I would I would ask them, "Hey, can you jump on a quick B live interview cuz I think 
people should learn from you as a fellow dentist about something clinical that you do. So you could even leverage them for content, even if they don't become a case study just yet in the early stages and pre-position yourself as somebody that has authority as you kind of build your case studies. It's a good temporary solution to let the people in the industry teach other people in the industry through you as the medium, okay? So that's another way to get started. Let's go with Joshua. Guys. What's up, man? What's up? I just ordered your book and got an automated trigger phone call. It was awesome. Go figure, go figure, eating my own dog food. Good I'm stuff. Thanks for grabbing it. I'm in, we're very excited. Thank you very much. Do you have Thank a question or you just wanted to? Today. Do you have any specific question? No, I was just saying, I, you were talking about it earlier. It just happened. And that's how quick it happens. So yeah, I liked it. So. And for, for me being in the industry, I get overwhelmed with phone calls like that. But everybody else we serve, it's nuanced. It's very new. They're excited about it and they're willing to pay for it. And that's why we're setting up this agency at this point. Thank 100%. you. Good share, man. I appreciate you doing that. That's that's great. Good, good example there. Okay, Josh. So let's do this. Um, let's talk about what we what we have for tomorrow. Okay. And set the stage for day three. Let me go ahead and uh, repin you here. I think I might have taken the little spot thing off. Hold on one second. Uh, let's see. There it is. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. So Josh, let's talk about what we got going on tomorrow. And also kind of wrap up today and share, you know, share a little bit about how people can find out about you as well. So we talked about the, the client attraction game plan. That was our big picture yesterday. Today we did the ultimate agency funnel, right? Which we really unpacked that basic three-step funnel, but all the little nuances and kind of the, the communication between the steps that can make all the difference. Um, we'd love to hear comments here, guys. Hashtag value if you got value and kind of unpacking the ultimate agency funnel, just so I can kind of get some context, whether this was meeting you guys where you're at and, and useful. Um, tomorrow, what we're going to do, we're going to shift gears a little bit, uh, and we're going to talk about cold outreach. Um, I recognize some of you guys are really experienced. You've got case studies, you've got funnels, you've got all of this stuff in place. Others of you, this is new, right? You're just launching this new SaaS, or you're just launching this new agency, and we've got to start somewhere. Um, and so... Cold outreach is usually where we have to start, right? But we can do it in a way that isn't obnoxious, that can actually add value in advance and can attract clients to us. And so I'm going to be unpacking the cold outreach formula, which is really around how do we get lists of prospects in our niche? How do we vet that list? How do we communicate through an on-ramp sequence in a way that gets them interested in kind of entering our world? And how do we shift that to, to long-term nurture? So, I mean, this is something everybody can use. And I'm really excited about unpacking with you guys tomorrow. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Josh. And also, how can people find out about your group and what you got going on and how do they engage with you? And we'll wrap up with that. Yeah, so I would say um, some people are like, that funnel stuff you showed was cool. And I would like that snapshot. I would like to, to kind of like have you give me your thing and just plug it in on my version. Uh, that's something we give to our seven-figure agency members. And so if that's something you're interested in, shoot me a personal message. We can get you some more details on that. Um, the best place to learn more about me would be to go to sevenfigureagency.com slash book or just go to sevenfigureagency.com. Um, I will mail you a free copy of our book, The Seven Figure Agency Roadmap. Um, this is the entire roadmap that we use to build our seven-figure agency and now have several hundred people that have followed suit. So that's probably the best place to start. Okay, awesome. Thanks for your time, Josh. Thanks for everybody jumping in with a ton of fantastic questions and we'll keep it going for day three tomorrow. Okay. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Paulson. Great stuff. Okay. Take care guys. Bye-bye.